Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily and today I have some fabulous farmhouse thrift flips for you. I am working in collaboration with Megan from The Crafty Quen and I'll explain more about that later. If you are not subscribed to my channel and you like what you see, I would love if you would consider subscribing. But let's go ahead and start flipping these items. I have this little wooden box that was a planter box that a potted plant came in and uh, since the potted plant has probably died let's be honest <laughs> but i'm going to make this over i want everything today to be kind of white and chippy fresh farmhouse with some greenery and so i'm just taping off the rope handles because i do like those and i am going to use rust-oleum's linen white chalk paint I do like this chalk paint a lot. I use it on all of the furniture items that I end up painting. I am currently out of my Waverly white chalk paint, so I decided to pull this out and use it. And I, I forgot how much I really do like this. So if you are looking for a new type and you haven't tried this, I highly recommend it. So I'm just going through here and giving this not even a full coat. It's just kind of sparsely putting it on. I'm letting the wood show through. We're wanting this to be very chippy and very weathered looking, but I'm going to do all sides. I'm going to do the rim around the top as well. And then I will also go down about an inch at the top. So if you can see into it, you'll still see that white paint. So for the technique I'm going to use here, I actually picked this up from Rhonda over at the Distressed Princess. And I am, I've never done this before and I was so amazed at how well this worked out. So I'm going to print on tissue paper. So I just cut tissue paper small enough to tape on a regular size piece of printer paper. You actually want it taped like this very well around all of the edges. I will leave a link to this graphic down in my description box. It just came from the Graphic Fairy. But you just print as normal. You just feed the paper through just as normal so it prints on the side that your tissue paper is on. And I did want to just show you that the painter's tape does peel right off the tissue paper without ripping it very easily. And you can see that it's just, I mean, it looks great printed on this tissue paper. I decided to rip around the uh, uh, print so that way when I put it on, I felt like maybe it would blend in a little bit more with the wood. So I'm not sure if cutting it would give it the same effect so you could try either way, but I did just go through and delicately ripped around the graphic here and I just put my finger there to stop it from tearing up in certain places. Now I'm going to center this on my box. And what I do first is I lay down some Mod Podge. And of course with Mod Podge, you go to pour just a little bit and like a ton comes out, right? So I just spread this all over the whole box and I am using the matte Mod Podge. And I center this, I eyeball it. You can be as exact as you want on this. And I just lightly press it down with my finger to make sure that it is kind of down. There's no air bubbles, kind of rub those out, but I'm being very delicate to not rip the tissue paper. And then I take my Mod Podge roller that I recently got and I roll over the top of this. And guys, this totally made the difference. It looks like this is completely just printed onto the box. And I do roll over it really well a few times to make sure that is down. And then with the leftover Mod Podge on my sponge, I just go around and get the edges to make sure that it stays down. But look at how amazing this looks. I think that you can't even tell that it's printed on any type of paper and put on there. It looks so good. And if you don't have a Cricut, this is a great alternative. I will leave the link to the graphic down in my description box. I have a series of frames that I have picked up through thrift stores, flea markets, garage sales over the years. And so I'm taking three of them to do this project with. This one was already kind of a cream colored, but I wanted it to be more of a bright white. So I am going over it with the linen white chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. And I just go through and give the entire frame a really good coat of that to brighten it up. Then I just take a baby wipe and you could use a tissue, anything, and just kind of rub off the raised area of this to kind of expose that through and look aged. 
Then I'm taking this pink frame. I picked this up at a thrift store years ago. It hung in my daughter's room for a while, but she's just kind of over the color pink now. So I'm gonna make it farmhouse. So I just give this a really good, um, it takes a couple coats to cover that pink. That pink was really dark and really bright. So I just go through and cover all of this with the Waverly, this is not Waverly, it's Rust-Oleum Linen White. After I get the desired amount of coats of the white paint on, I take a baby wipe and I use some elephant chalk paint by Waverly and I go through and rub it, rub it and dab it kind of on the raised areas of this frame. This is what's going to age and make this look weathered. And I just go through until I get it how I want that, light in some areas, darker in other areas. And then I go back in with the chalk paint and I just lightly brush over the top to kind of dull it down a little bit and make it look like it's kind of that layered look where it is kind of aged in the crevices and everything um, and I just go over this and keep repeating the process until I get what I want with this last frame this frame is huge guys I don't know if you can fully get how big this is but I had to zoom way out but it is cracked in areas the print is very faded and damaged and so it, this is a very nice painting as I was tearing this apart. This is so sturdy, but I had to rip everything out so I could get the print out of the middle. So I just kind of went to town and ripped the back completely off. And then I pried open the little prongs here so I could get the print out. You can see that the print is faded. It's got some permanent scuffs and marks on it. It's just not my style, so I decided that I'm gonna try something else with it. So I do go over this frame. This also took several coats to get it to the desired uh, white color that I wanted, but I just used the chalk paint. And then to age this one, I go through with my emery board and I sand all over, uh, kind of on the raised edges, and then I will kind of go in on the flat parts and I will really kind of scuff it up a little bit. I really wanted this to look very, very chippy. I'm going for just that really chippy white look with all of my projects today. One of my daughter's books had been ripped and torn in several pieces and so I kept uh, part of it that was still salvageable and I'm using that to cut out some little scalloped pieces and what I'm going to do is Mod Podge these over the back of the print that was in the picture. So I start by just putting a line of Mod Podge down and kind of spreading that out. This is very simple, very basic. You just take each little scalloped piece and I'm going to place it down. Uh, and that way, and I just kind of go through in layers. I do like this row and then I move on to the next row and get it so it's completely covered. Um, and then I kind of offset the next row. You can see me do that here. So I just lay another row of the Mod Podge down and then go in between the scalloped layers on that other edge. And I do this through the whole thing. I do go over the edges as you can see on the sides and the top and the bottom. And I'll go through and cut those off once, once I'm done. And then after I get this all trimmed up, I do just slide it back into the frame and get it all pressed down in there. And you can kind of see what it looks like there. It just adds a little bit of texture element to it. I am so excited to put these frames in my house. I think they look so great. They're so farmhouse. I think that the chippiness on them is perfect. The aging and the weathering. I really do like how the pages that I cut the scalloped edges out look in the back of that big frame it was rather empty to not have anything in there and I feel like that was the perfect thing to add in there to keep it kind of that really simple clean white look so let me know if you guys have ever done anything with old frames like this down in the comments I would love to know what you guys have done with them
Today I'm working with the wonderful Megan over at the Crafty Quinn. She is so talented. We are doing farmhouse thrift flips today. Go check out her YouTube channel. I will have a link down in my description box directly to her channel. But look at some of the fun farmhouse things that she creates. She is so talented. I have absolutely loved working with her on this. If you are not subscribed to her or you have never watched her videos, you definitely want to go check her out. Let her know that Emily from Farm Charm Chic sent you over there. This is a really fun, simple one. I picked this little orb up at the vintage market days that I went to a couple of months ago, and I wasn't too excited about the color of it. I bought it with the anticipation that I would be painting it, and I thought this was the perfect collaboration to do it in. So I'm just using my chalk spray paint there, and I just go all over. Since it is open and it is that um, sphere shape, you do wanna go in, make sure you get all of the edges, kind of wait for it to dry and then turn it and spin it and make sure that you cover up all of the colors. And then I do just take my emery board. You can take sandpaper, a finger sander, whatever you like. You could even, if you don't have a sand, like anything to sand it with, just use some chalk paint, like of a darker color in there to help age it. The sanding on this actually worked really well. You did not get a lot of that turquoise color coming through. It actually sanded all the way down to get like the, the original color of the metal orb. And so I really like how it turned out. I did take this plant from Ikea and took a couple sprigs off of that. I thought it would be fun to kind of see what it looked like to put a little bit of greenery on the inside since I am trying to go for that really white and really green look. You would not have to do this, but I thought it kind of was fun and I actually like how it ended up looking with everything together. This is just one of those perfect little items to have to kind of stick in a little pocket that needs a little something extra or on a tiered tray. I really love how this turned out and it was super simple and super quick. I found these two little pots at a yard sale the other day and they are from Ikea. So I believe they still sell these so you could definitely recreate this. They were sitting on a 25 cent table and the lady sold them to me for the pair for 25 cents. So I feel like I did pretty good. But I am trying the hair dryer trick to get the stickers off the bottom and it did work out very well. I'm going to take a nail and I'm going to puncture a hole into the bottom of one of the little pots here. I'm just using a rubber mallet because that's what I happen to have right there and it did work out just fine. But I did have to put my uh, nail through in a couple different spots to make the hole big enough because I am going to take one of these wooden spindles. I did get these from Amazon and I will leave a link down in the description box for those. But I put that through and then I am going to layer it with the one on the bottom. I'm going to make kind of like a tiered planter if you will. So I do use a combination of E6000 and hot glue, and I don't show it on the bottom one, but I do end up placing a piece of styrofoam down in the bottom. That way it gives the spindle a little something more to stick into. And then after that's in, I do put a lot of hot glue down there to make sure that it is going to stay extremely stable. And then I do the same thing to the top to make sure that that top stays in place also, so it's not gonna go anywhere. So at the same yarn cell, they also had this plant, which is from Ikea. So maybe Ikea is not their style. I don't know. I absolutely love these plants. And I think it was $2 that I paid for this. And it actually came in a different 
pot too that I got with it. So I feel like I really did okay. But anyway, I use these plants in so many different things. So I'm just taking a few sprigs off of this and I'm just going to place it in all along the bottom of this little tiered planter. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the top and place them in there. I think this turned out so cute. I love this. This is another one of those little things that you can just tuck into a little bit of an empty space that you've got that you need to bring a little bit of greenery into. I love the simplicity of the white and that little bit of lace detail on those planners. I think this is so cute. Is Ikea somewhere that you guys like to shop for decorations? I absolutely love it. I got this wrought iron piece at a moving sale that I stopped at and I think it is really pretty the way that it is but I did wanna kinda of go with that white chippy look. It is very long. Uh, you could hang it long ways or you like horizontal or vertically. I do end up doing mine vertically. Um, no, I don't. I end up doing horizontally. Don't I don't know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I go ahead and clean this really good. It was extremely dusty. I probably could have even taken it outside and squirted it off like with a pressure washer or something to help get it off, but it took me a little while. But I do go use my chalk spray paint and I do spray paint this all over. I make sure that I get the front really good and then I kind of go from a side angle on each side. And then I do end up turning it over, doing the same thing on the back. And then I even stand it up. I don't think I show it, but I did stand it up to make sure that from all angles, all of that black was completely covered and all you could see was just the white spray paint. I then take my emery board and I go through, of course, uh, any kind of sander will work to do this. You wouldn't have to distress it if you didn't want to. I feel that that really does kind of add um, a different dimension to it, some texture. I really like the way that it kind of looks all scuffed up and aged, but I do go through the whole thing. You can take as much or little time doing this. Um, it, it actually sanded really easily along the edges and I'm really, really pleased with how it turned out. I did take just a little wreath that I had. You can get them at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, anywhere like that. And I did put it in the middle of this. I probably will hang this on my wall. I just hung it from a wreath hanger right now, but you can see up close all of that detail from the sanding, how good it looks. I think it looks so great. There are so many different things. Like I said, you could hang it vertically also if you wanted. You could would not have to add the wreath onto it. If you hung it vertically, you could add, add multiple wreaths to it but I really do absolutely love how this turned out. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.